Good morning students. I am Deepika. I have made this video for you all so that you can understand the chapter in an interesting way. Here I am going to start with chapter 8 India climate vegetation and wildlife of geography for class 6. Dear students when you read newspaper daily and watch on tv or hear others talking about weather you must have noticed that weather is about day to day changes in the atmosphere it includes changes in temperature rainfall and sunshine for example it may be hot or cold sunny or cloudy windy or calm you must have noticed that when it is hot continuously for several days you don't need any warm clothing you also like to eat or drink cold things in contrast there are days together you feel cold without woolen clothes when it is very windy and chilly you would like to have something hot to eat now students the major seasons recognized in india are cold weather season that is winter hot weather season that is summer southwest monsoon season that is rainy and season of retreating monsoon that is autumn now let's know about these seasons in detail starting with cold weather season or winter it starts from december to february During the winter season the sun rays do not fall directly in the region as a result the temperatures are quite low in northern india the next is hot weather season or summer it starts from march to may in the hot weather season sun rays more or less directly fall in this region temperature becomes very high hot and dry winds called lu blow during the day now the southwest monsoon season or rainy season it starts from june to september and it is marked by the onset and advance of monsoon the winds blow from arabian sea and bay of bengal towards the land they carry moisture with them when these winds strike the mountain barriers rainfall occurs the next is the season of retreating monsoons or autumn It starts in October and November. Winds move back from the mainland to the Bay of Bengal. This is the season of the retreating monsoons. The southern parts of India, particularly Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, receive rainfall in this season. The next sub topic is climate. The climate is about the average weather condition which have been measured over many years. The climate of India has broadly been described as monsoon type. Monsoon is taken from the Arabic word mausim which means seasons. Due to India's location 
in the tropical region most of the rain is brought by monsoon winds agriculture in india is dependent on rains good monsoons mean adequate rain and a bountiful crop the climate of a place is affected by its location altitude distance from the sea and relief therefore we experience regional differences in the climate of india jaisalmer and bikaner in the desert of rajasthan are very hot while dras and kargil in jammu and kashmir are freezing cold coastal places like mumbai and kolkata experience moderate climate they are neither too hot nor too cold being on the coast these places are very humid places in meghalaya receives the world's highest rainfall while in a particular year it might not rain at all in areas in rajasthan the next topic is natural vegetation students we see a variety of plant life in our surroundings how nice it is to play in a field with green grasses there are also small plants called bushes and shrubs like cactus and flowering plants like roses besides there are many tall trees some with many branches and leaves like neem mango or some which stand with few leaves such as palm the grasses shrubs and trees which grow on their own without interference or help from human beings are called natural vegetation do you wonder how these differ from each other different types of natural vegetation are dependent on different climatic conditions among which the amount of rainfall is very important due to varied climatic conditions india has a wide range of natural vegetation vegetation in india can be divided into five types tropical evergreen forest tropical deciduous forest thorny bushes mountain vegetation and mangrove forest forests are very useful for us dear students let's now understand why are forests necessary they perform various functions plants release oxygen that we breathe and absorb carbon dioxide the roots of the plants bind the soil thus they control soil erosion forests provide us with timber for furniture fuel wood fodder medicinal plants and herbs honey gum etc forests are the natural habitat of wildlife natural vegetation has been destroyed to a large extent because of the reckless cutting of trees we should plant more trees and protect the existing ones and make people aware of the importance of trees we can have special programs like van mahotsav to involve more people in making our earth green forests 
are home to a variety of wildlife. Dear students, there are thousands of species of animals and a large variety of reptiles, amphibians, mammals, birds, insects and worms which dwell in the forest. The tiger is our national animal. It is found in various parts of the country. Gir forest in Gujarat is the home of Asiatic lions, elephants and one horned rhinos roam in the forests of Assam. Elephants are also found in Kerala and Karnataka. Camels and wild asses are found in the Great Indian Desert and the run of Kutch. Wild goats, snow leopards, bears, etc. are found in the Himalayan region. India is equally rich in bird life. The peacock is a national bird. Other common birds are parrots, pigeons, geese, bulbul and ducks. There are several bird sanctuaries which have been created to give birds their natural habitat. These provide the birds protection from hunters. Dear students, can you name five birds that are commonly found in your area? Dear students, many species have already become extinct. Due to cutting of forests and hunting, several species of wildlife of India are declining rapidly. In order to protect them, many national parks, sanctuaries and biosphere reserves have been set up. The government has also started Project Tiger and Project Elephant to protect these animals. You can also contribute in conserving wildlife. We can refuse to buy things made from parts of the bodies of animals such as their bones, horns, fur, skins and feathers. We should not encourage activities like hunting and poaching. Every year we observe wildlife week in the first week of October to create awareness of conserving the habitats of the animal kingdom.